Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Bow and Arrow Tarot. Today we are doing the weekly for 15th, September 15th to the 21st for the sign, Scorpio. All right, my beautiful Scorpios, we're gonna get right into getting out your angel messages for this week. And don't forget this is time stamped, so you can go into the top of the description and you will see the timestamps for all the sections and forecasts in the video. You can go ahead and jump ahead. Worth waiting for. This card has been coming out on and off for you for weeks. Love yourself first. And we have heart to heart conversations. Again, this card came out for you, I believe it was last week. Beautiful. All right, so. What does that all mean for you this week, right? Let's just make sure everything is lined here. There we go. All right, let's get your animal spirits out. It's a lot of beautiful energy. Worth waiting for, loving yourself, heart-to-heart -heart conversations. We're talking about really positive energy here this week. Certainly in all relationships, right? Doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. Heart-to-heart -heart conversations can apply to friends, family, and career, right? Let's get ready to pull out your cards. Zebra. Wow. Beautiful. Very, very creative. Very unique, the zebra is. Beautiful creature. The deer. All right, so earth energy. We have fire and earth. And the otter, oh, I love the otter. Water energy, lovable, sweet, very lovable energy. A lot of cuddliness going on there. So for those of you who are in sort of um, love relationships, this is certainly going to be a very cuddly week. Um, beautiful. So before we get into your spread, let's just go ahead and get ready to look at these animal spirits. And we'll just take each in turn. We'll start off with the zebra. And the zebra, again, is... Um, the zebra is the card for the eccentric, all right? So we're talking about very eccentric, artistic energy here. The zebra is extremely unique, uh, creative, very much a visionary. But this is definitely the animal spirit for the eccentric. The zebras are the most of uh, are the most precious of gems, is what is said about them, and they're very young at heart, extremely cultured individuals. They have a sort of undying curiosity about life, the zebra, but um, it's that kind of culture and curiosity that makes them one of these sort of very refined eccentrics, as it were. Um, not only are they simply a delightful person to be around, but they're the type of person that can open up your mind. The zebra is the type of eccentric that can open up even the stuffiest of minds because they are just so endearing. Um, and they are just, um, and what they come with is, is quality. You know, we're not talking about the kooky eccentric that has nothing to follow up his eccentric ideas. The zebra character is refined, is educated, well-traveled, uh, creative individual, but along with all of that, there's this high level of curiosity and eccentricity so that when they do come into a company of really stuffy, conservative individuals, they're able to really get them on their side because they are at the same time extremely intelligent and well-read personalities, all right? So beautiful, if you're dealing with a zebra personality this week, it is certainly a delight for you, I can say that, honestly. Now, when we get into deer energy, the deer, it's very, very beautiful, uh, feminine energy. Deer energy talks about nurturing, right? It is the card for the mother in the deck. We're talking about love here, unabiding, um, unconditional, intuitive, graceful love. The deer represents the feminine aspect of earth, 
right? So we're talking about that kind of really grounded, and this is regardless of gender. This is not a gender thing, but this is sort of a very grounded, practical, loving, sort of feminine nurturing quality. The deer um, talks about, it reminds you of sort of that protection and love that is required by something like an infant. A newborn child, right, requires a lot of attention and grace. It requires a lot of nurturing and protection. And so it's this kind of sense of calm that the deer brings with it. Tenderness that is needed, right? And so when you talk about something new coming into your life, right? The, the dear energy could be an energy or a person, but it's that type of energy you're bringing to something. It's a tenderness that you're bringing, a compassion, a sense of nurturing, of support, of loving, allowing something to grow, that kind of attention that is required by a newborn or something that is very fragile, vulnerable, that's just come into being. So this could very much much be uh, uh, the, the manifestation of an idea idea or a goal that is close to your heart. It could indeed be a new child, right? An actual child. Some of you may be new mothers, but it's the same with all stages in our lives. Relationships, uh, projects, ideas, goals, all of these things can benefit from this type of energy. And then we have otter energy, which is really lovely. Um, Water energy, the otter is so sweet and cuddly. Uh, they sleep with their mate all entwined and cuddled up. They can never get enough physical attention from their loved ones. Um, the otter is just a delight to be around. They're extremely playful, right? Extremely contented creatures. Uh, when you're dealing with an otter person or when you have otter energy in your life, you really can't help but be happy and joyful in a way, very blissful. Um, they don't worry. They don't have doubt. They don't have skepticism. And certainly in love, when the otter is in love, the otter is absolutely a delight. They trust their love. They're not doubtful or paranoid, uh, having self-esteem issues or... Uh, you know, feeling inadequate in any way, you know, sensitive, right? The, the, the otter doesn't suffer from these things. So the otter's time with its loved one is absolutely unadulterated bliss because it's not obstructed by these very negative feelings that a lot of us bring personally that we bring into situations that aren't even are there, right? Oftentimes we manifest, a lot of us will manifest as a problem in a relationship that isn't there. Well, the otter doesn't suffer from that. The otter simply enjoys being with their loved ones, their friends, and that's it. And so otter energy or people who are resonating with otter energy tend to affect those around them in a very profound way in the sense that they remind them of all the bliss that there is to enjoy in life. So let's get right into your spread, my lovely Scorpio. This is a really loved up set of cards for you this week. I want to say. All right. <clears throat> but we won't know until we actually get into your spread. So let's do that now. And of course, this may or may not resonate with part or all of your week. <clears throat> These cards may or may not resonate with uh, people you're dealing with. And that's fine, too. Just take whatever applies to you, right, and throw the rest away. My audience is fairly discerning. And so I trust, I trust you all to kind of just take in what you need to take in and ignore the rest. All right, let's get right into it. We have Eight of Pentacles, King of Wands, and Ten of Pentacles. So Eight of Pentacles, Eight is the number for boundaries and weaknesses and strengths. So with Eight of Pentacles, we talk about someone who's learned to put in those restrictions that is necessary to keep disciplined, to keep working at a task until they have mastered it. So you're being very diligent. You've been working very hard. You're coming into the week with this energy. Uh, some of you have a King of Wands in your life. This could be your lover that you're dealing with this week. Um, 
And it's quite interesting. They come in, you have these, you may be having some conversations with them, um, but they're certainly taking notice of all the hard work that you're doing, right? And it's this noticing of all your hard work uh, that becomes the uh, point of discussion. I almost feel like for some of you Scorpios, this King of Wands individual who is a very fiery individual in your life, and again, not gender specific, may be coming in to sort of like whisk you off your feet this week, take you somewhere. Um, you do end the week with a Ten of Pentacles, and I feel like it's almost as if your loved one or someone who is very close to you comes in and lets you know how hard you've been working recently, Scorpio, and they just want to treat you uh, very nicely, and you have this really harmonious, happy, contented end to the week, very otter energy. I want to say that for some of you, why is that significant? It could be that you've been working very hard for quite some time and you felt as though it was unacknowledged, okay? But this week you get your acknowledgement. King of Pentacles, Two of Cups, and Three of Cups. Wow. So some of you... <laughs> Some of you have a king of pentacles in your life and you lock it down or they lock it down with you and it's one of these things where you make it very known and public, right, Scorpio? Uh, this king of pentacles is coming in. He wants to be with you. Now, again, this person could very well, I'm going to say this person is someone who is very successful. Uh, they're very industrious. Of course, they're a king of pentacles, right? So this person has a certain level of status that they've achieved, a certain level of abundance, certainly, cert certainly a level of mastery in their field, right? Um, and so this is the kind of individual we're dealing with, certainly a fiery, earthy individual, because, of course, pentacles is earth and kings are fire. So we're dealing with a very fiery, earthy character, um, and so I want to say this person could be probably very practical as well. But this week they come in for you, Scorpio. And towards the end of the week, it's a case of just letting everyone know. Everyone sort of celebrates your union. You have a three of cups. I want to say this is kind of the next stage. That stage of like letting all your friends and family know that you two are now together. Page of Swords, Eight of Cups, and Nine of Wands. Wow, so some of you have certainly had a conversation this week. It starts off the week with a conversation with someone. Um, and it seems to be a very innocent sort of conversation. It could even be sort of just like an off-the-cuff sort of comment or exchange. Whatever the case may be, there is some sort of exchange you have this week with someone. An exchange of ideas, right? And it kind of opens you up to this idea of... Uh, not settling for less anymore. Some of you, Scorpio, certainly have an epiphany this week. This conversation means that you have well and truly put the shallow relationships in the past. Eight of Cups is sort of, again, eight is the number for discipline and restrictions. Um, it could very well be that you have a conversation with your person about, uh, the about your relationship, you know, um, you know, the commitment in your relationship in the sense of what are you each expecting? Right? It's quite interesting that it will come out as Eight of Cups. It's almost as if you make it very clear to them that there's a certain level of interaction that you want. You're not willing to just have a shallow connection. You want something much deeper. And you also have criteria to that. There's certain criteria you have that must be filled for you to get to that deeper level. And I think this conversation is around this idea could very well be getting you as well. This conversation could very well get you to think about your own sort of boundaries uh, that you need to put in place in relationships. Uh, it could get you thinking about this as well, right, this week. It's quite interesting because you then end up feeling like you start to look back on, uh, we have nine ones here, you start to look back on previous relationships and where the lack, perhaps the lack of boundaries or where you began to sort of pick up bad habits, baggage, um, negative sort of self-thinking, uh, you know, self-esteem issues. These are all these 
what is these nine wands are comprised of, right? These are all sort of the baggages that we've collected along the way, or perhaps the hangups that we've held on to. And nine of wands, we begin to look back and see them for what they are, which are obstacles to our progress, right? But it's interesting. It's almost like this whole thing begins with this conversation here, and it really opens up not only your desire to have um, a, a, a deeper sort of requirement for a relationship, you know, a deeper, a deeper um, sort of level that someone has to live up to. You know what I'm saying? Like a higher level. You set the bar higher for the type of relationships that you want, right? All of this has also made you very much reevaluate the past and a lot of the shit you've been holding on to. And I think you're going to be very quickly coming to a Ten of Wands after that. Hermit energy, Knight of Cups, and Six of Swords. Some of you have certainly been living very solitary, reclusive life. Uh, you haven't been in a relationship, and this week it's like you absolutely, either you or your person come toward the other with uh, a real sort of cup of love. Again, it's so interesting. Your, your, your cards this week, Scorpio, are very loved up cards, like I said, and so far every forecast has been about a loving relationship that's wanting to go to the next level. Here, after coming out of this period of being solitary, this Knight of Cups is coming in. And like I said, it may be you uh, that's handing your cup to someone or someone may be handing their cup to you, right? But this is all in the spirit of moving towards harmony. This is a real journey that you're wanting to make, Six of Swords. Perhaps you realize it's time that you want to make this journey with someone else. You want to journey to, toward a harmonious home life and a harmonious union, right? And so this person coming into you or you going towards this person is in an effort to sort of set off this journey right here. Certainly this would, would be a new relationship starting. Five of Cups chariot and justice so some of you certainly have been miserable and sort of thinking about past relationships and the sadness that they caused you right but you realize this week that it's time to prepare the chariot for the future um you realize that you know those things are well and truly in the past and that it's time for the scales of karmic the karmic scales um sort of the scales of life in a way begin to balance out a bit more and begin to come more into your favor. You've really, for some of you, you've really uh, been ruminating on some kind of, on a lot of sort of sadness in the past relationships that have been unfulfilling, perhaps even family traumas that have been unfulfilling. But this week is a real change in sort of like your outlook. You realize that if you make the effort to sort of lift your head toward the future and work on a path toward a better future, a future with love in it perhaps, or a future at least towards your ultimate dreams and ambitions for yourself, um, your luck begins to change and the scales begin to come more into your favor, the scales of life and certainly karmic scales. Four of Swords, Queen of Wands, Two of Wands, some of you have certainly been waiting being very strategic, sitting back, wondering what the next step is. Some of you are dealing with a queen of wands in your life. This person is a very, very beautiful, sort of strong, feminine individual. This person has gone through a lot of self-realization. This person has really been through a lot of ups and downs, almost baptism by fire, as it were. That is the essence of the queen of wands. But this person is in your life, Scorpio, and you've been kind of strategizing recently about how to move forward with this person. I think this weekend you decide, or this week you decide how to do that. You certainly are looking to the future. Now, some of you may be resonating with Queen of Wands energy in the sense that, um, that you've made up your mind about what you want. However, I don't really... I really don't feel that. I feel like a lot of you Scorpios out there, you're dealing with a Queen of Wands. You're dealing with a Queen of Wands, and this Queen of Wands is looking to the future also. 
I think for some of you, you don't realize, or maybe you've been thinking and strategizing how to move forward with this Queen of Wands, but you don't really realize that this Queen of Wands is also thinking about you in the same way and looking to the future. Well, this week, I think this conversation happens, heart to heart conversations, and you begin to understand and you are able to move forward with your future plans because Two of Wands is about Mars and Aries energy. It's very boldly going forward after you've planted the seeds, after you've had the inspiration of the Ace of Wands. It's very determinedly, intentionally moving forward with your plans. And so by the end of the week, you certainly feel that after having the heart-to-heart -heart conversations with your Queen of Wands. And this is going to be the last one, Four of Wands, Moon Energy and Nine of Swords. Wow, again, another relationship draw. So, Four of Wands, for some of you, <clears throat> you're just worrying, you're unsure this week. You're worrying because you have a connection with somebody, you absolutely believe this is a soulmate connection, and this connection worth waiting for has been worth waiting for, but this week you're just a bit unsure. The moon comes in and you're just doubting yourself. There's some Piscean energy happening, some Cancerian energy, in a sense that you're not really sure of what you're feeling. Um, or it could very well be Scorpio that you do know what you're feeling. You're sure now that you are feeling indeed in love, but this scares you, this worries you. The type of love you're feeling, for some of you Scorpios, you may not have felt that up until now. It's really like this energy is certainly causing you sort of that anxiety of moon energy, this kind of worry, uh, fear of the depth of your own feelings, right? And so you have some sleepless nights. Nine of Swords comes up, a little bit of worrying. If I allow myself to go in this relationship, will I be hurt, you know? It's that feeling of when you meet somebody and, you know, you know that this person or this union with this person uh, could be so deep and so fulfilling. But, of course, the flip side to that is that uh, if something were to go wrong or it didn't last, the pain would be really, really um, overwhelming. And so this is the fear, right? This is the fear a lot of us have, especially when you find a relationship that is this kind of four of wands, soulmate, 11-11 energy here, uh, you begin to search your feelings and wonder, wow, you know, I mean, do I really, not only is this the perfect co co relationship or connection, but if I allow myself to fall as deeply as I'd like to, uh, will I survive if something goes wrong? So yeah, you have a lot of worry about that. But again, what I always say with the Nine of Swords and the, that anxiety that keeps you up and keeps you having sleepless nights is that this is indeed just the, the only thing that this represents is your own self-doubt. There is nothing in actuality. The Nine of Swords doesn't indicate any sort of picking up on reality sort of thing. This is simply torturing yourself with negative thinking that has no bearing on what the future really holds or what the situation at hand is truly about. There's no indication here that this relationship would not be a happy and long enduring relationship, right? So that's the message there. And I'm gonna leave it on that, Scorpio. This is your September 15th to the 21st weekly uh, forecast. It's been a very loved up week for you, Scorpio. I do wish you all the best. If this resonated with you, please like, subscribe, share the video. More than anything, really share it on your social media and with your friends, especially if you like the video, you like the message and it resonates with you. Um, um, I'm a big believer in spreading the message and spreading sort of anything that makes you feel good with others. So definitely uh, share the video with your loved ones and your friends and any other Scorpios that you know may benefit from it. But for right now, Scorpio, have a wonderful week, a lovely, cuddly week, and I shall see you next week. Bye-bye now.